definitely. Let's get into some fan quesos over here. We got a couple here because uh, I didn't, I didn't, I guess, address that this was Rams Ram showcase. So I said, drop your fan quesos. And my first one here is, uh, what exactly are fan quesos? Fan cheeses. If that's the case, what kind of cheese do you like on your nachos? What a dumb question, first of all. This is one of the dumbest questions I've ever heard. What kind of cheese do I like on my nachos? Nacho cheese, Uncle Matt. Jesus. Anyway, next one here from Gary. Kyle Van Noy, yes or no? I'm absolutely down for it. I just don't know how the money will work. All right, so obviously I would like to have Kyle Van Noy in L.A. playing for the Rams. Uh, I think he would bring a very like underrated aspect to this Rams defense this year. I'm not sure how the money will work out. We'll see if the Rams and in, in uh let's make a deal Sneed can wiggle something out. But uh yeah, I would I would like him. I, I would like to have Van Noy in uh in LA with horns on his helmet, not a bolt. Uh next one here from Cody. Are you ready for Stat Padford to start padding playoff dubs? I when I first read this one, man, <laughs> when it said, Are you ready for Stat Padford? I like almost rolled my eyes like, ugh, like one of these. <laughs> and then you finished it with the playoff dubs. So I do appreciate that. Um uh, yeah, a lot of people call him Stat Padford because uh, a lot of I mean, Lions were down in a lot of games. And uh, a lot of people are claiming, you know, garbage garbage time stats and stuff like that, but uh, I think I, this is a, a comment that I, I did have. There was a couple people that they were talking about uh, Matt Stafford saying that you know he can't read defenses. But my only question back, which I never got a response to uh, on a couple different times, was um, is Matt Stafford an improvement over Jared Goff? Yes or no? That's all the answer I need. Yes or no? You can give me reasoning behind it or not. I don't care. Yes or no is the question. Okay, that's the answer that I'm looking for is a yes or no. Is Matt Stafford better than Jared Goff? If the answer is yes, then it doesn't matter. The Rams made the right call. If the answer is no, I don't think you watch enough football. So, I mean, Matt Stafford's clearly a better quarterback than Jared Goff. I would have said this last year, even though I'm a Jared Goff supporter. Uh, but, you know, that that's the question that I have is, is, is he better? Yeah, yeah, he may, he may not be the number one guy. He may not be a top five quarterback but he's better than Jared Goff. And the Rams, their weak spot was quarterback last year. The Lions' strong spot has been quarterback for the last 12 years or whatever it is. Or 11 years. But yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> to answer your question, Cody, I am ready. And next one here from Cody. Matthew Stafford, what does he have to do to warrant an extension? Just not lose us a bunch of games, man. Just not blow it. Just uh, If the Rams are in the playoffs and... He has like a three interception game and the Rams lose by by nine points. That's not good. That's what that's what'll get him not extended. I think he's gonna get extended though. Just spoiler alert. I mean he's only thirty three, and I know that some people feel like that's really old, but I mean the Super Bowl MVP was just forty three. I realize that's a totally different animal in uh Tom Brady, so I mean, yeah, you gotta take that into consideration. But if he can even play half of that for the next five years, if we can get him to these 38, I mean, I'm good with it. I'm good with the trade and everything. This next set comes from Jay. Welcome back, Jay. I've missed your questions, man. Uh, with so many new faces coming in this year, how do you think Les and McVay construct the team for 2021? I don't think it gets a whole lot different. I think we've kind of seen the the blueprint of a Les Sneed and Sean McVay team put together. I mean, you get an edge rusher that you like, that you're a fan of, that's got a high motor. Uh, you you make sure your secondary is really strong because you got Aaron Donald rushing the passer. You you go with depth at wide receiver, not necessarily superstars. Young running backs, it seems to be the trend here. Uh, so I, I think we kind of already know. I think we, we already, I, I think it's not going to look too different from last year, aside from those those missing pieces, those that, that edge rusher, uh, that... That deep threat wide receiver. Now, obviously, the new quarterback. Maybe a different looking backfield as as far as the rotation goes. But ultimately, I think it's pretty similar to how we looked last year. Schematically, I think a couple of things are going to change with the new quarterback. And then, of course, Raheem Morris on the defensive side. Number two, out of our young outside linebackers, who do you think steps up next season? If no one, who would you like to Rams to sign? I really do like Terrell Lewis, and I think that he's going to have a, a strong season. 
His thing is staying healthy, and he needs to stay on the field. The best ability is availability, and if he's on the sidelines in street clothes wearing a hoodie and a beanie, that doesn't do the Rams a lot of good, and you can't win games for your team when you're uh, when you're wearing shorts on the sidelines. It just doesn't work out that way, so uh, I, I think that Terrell Lewis can be that guy. I think he's got the skill set to be that guy for sure, so uh, that's kind of who I'm... Uh, Talking about this offseason is uh, is Terrell Lewis. And, and I think Samson Abukam kind of comes back and does a little bit more too. Uh, physically, Samson Abukam is becoming one of the more athletic Rams defenders, especially at the linebacker spot. So I think that's worth noting as well. And if he can get, because he's now he's super athletic. He's been working out like crazy. If you've seen him, you know what I'm talking about. And then uh, if he's got the extremely high motor. So if he can piece everything together, I think he's going to be a very valuable member of this uh, LA Rams defense. Number three, rank the starting quarterbacks in our division. Strong question. Love this stuff here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, I mean, Russell Wilson is the is the top quarterback. Uh, he's ex- insanely talented. He's a Hall of Famer. I'm not sure anybody else is a Hall of Famer. Maybe Matt Stafford can be. Uh, I think in the right situation, if he, I mean, he's statistically, he's up there for sure. Uh, but if he can uh, nail down a Super Bowl win, I think that that, that helps. Uh, but as far as number two, I think I will give it to Matt Stafford. That may be Rams bias. It may not be. But either way, Kyler Murray has not done enough for me, like consistency wise, for me to say that he is that guy. He's very talented, but consistently not there yet. And uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, I just said it, the best ability is availability. If he can stay on the field, I think he could be that guy. The Niners play a lot better when he is out there. But, you know, I mean, he's also letting Nick Mullins start sometimes. And who is that other guy? I don't know. But uh, he's letting other guys start because he's out, he's out there on the sideline, you know, wincing in pain. So uh, the best ability is availability. So that's what I'll go with. I'll go Russell Wilson, number one, Matt Stafford, number two, Kyler Murray, number three, Jimmy Garoppolo, number four. Next question here from Jay. Is it just me or do outside linebackers take a one year prove a deal with the Rams to play next to Aaron Donald and earn that big payday the following year? In any case, I would like to see Clowney next to Donald. Thoughts? You know, I didn't like Clowney coming out. He had one big hit and and, and I thought that that's what really got him in. And then he's obviously super athletic. He's kind of proven me wrong a little bit as far as his effort level and longevity in the C- in the uh, in the NFL. I didn't necessarily think that he would still be here today, uh, based on his effort levels early. His effort levels early in Houston were trash, and I was like, this guy's going to be gone soon. Like he's no one, who's going to get this guy. Uh, would I like to see him in LA? Yeah, I would not hate this at all. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to ask for money. You know, when you're when you're that high of a pick, sometimes that kind of follows you around and you can earn big paydays whether or not you're performing or not. Sam Bradford. Uh, next question here. With a couple of notable holes in the team, what is the main position of need for the 2021 LA Rams? I'm going to say wide receiver, and that's simply because, I mean, Robert Woods obviously is super awesome. Cooper Cup, if he can stay and actually play in the Rams' biggest games of the season, he's a very, very valuable asset. Josh Reynolds might be gone. Van Jefferson gets talked highly uh, uh, by Sean McVay, so I like that as well. Um, but also, Sean McVay needs to back that up. If you're going to talk highly about a guy and talk about how awesome he is, play him. I mean, let, let him catch the football, man. Um, but I would say that deep threat is what the Rams are missing right now. Um, linebacker can be addressed. I don't think the Rams linebackers are weak, but I do think Joe Barry had a big deal, like a big part in the, the Rams' weak spot of linebacker last year actually becoming a strength. And now that he's gone as the Green Bay Packers defensive coordinator, I think that that could be something that the Rams want to address with more talent. It was something we could get away with when we had Joe Barry, not necessarily anymore. Next one here from Jay. Everyone in the league has an ego. Do you think McVay values his system more than some players? I really like this question. I almost wish I had a co-host for this for this question specifically. Most of the time, 99.9% of the time, I'm very glad I don't have a co-host. But... Uh, for this question, I think that this would be a good one to bounce off of because I'm not 100% sure what you mean by this question, but what I do feel like is that Sean McVay has a vision, and when he sees something that he wants to do and the players can't execute that, okay, get that guy out, let's see who can do it. And I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. There's talented players all over the place. The NFL is full of extremely talented players. We should know that, though. It's the NFL. These are some of the top-tier players in the world. You know what I mean? Uh, but 
y- yes, I think he does value a system more than certain players, but I think that's okay. I don't think that's a bad thing. Uh, there are certain players that, I mean, it, it started coming out that, that Todd Gurley, they didn't like his attitude. They didn't think he worked hard enough. So yeah, get get him out of here. Like The value money-wise was there because the Rams obviously extended him, but then the system became more valuable. So get him out. I'm okay with that. Next one, is Van Jefferson ready to step up as a starting caliber wide receiver? He could be our successor to Woods or even Cup. Yes, I absolutely think this is possible. Uh, like I said, Van or uh, Sean McVay talks very highly of Van Jefferson, and that's a good thing. But back it up and play him. Uh, obviously, the Rams have not utilized rookies under Sean McVay that much. The 2020 season is the time we've seen the most rookie playtime with guys like uh, like Jordan Fuller, Terrell Burgess before he got hurt. Cam Akers was out there quite a bit. So it did happen a little bit more this year. And maybe, maybe that'll continue to progress, but, and also maybe it's because the Rams are picking late and maybe we don't need these guys to be starters right away. You know, like, you know, we had Van Jefferson, but he was behind Cooper cup, uh, Robert Woods and Josh Reynolds. So yeah, we didn't necessarily need him to be in all the time, but if you're going to talk that highly of him, dude, play him, like let let him play. But yeah, I, I absolutely think that he's uh, he's getting to that position. Um, I we've seen the flashes from him, and we haven't seen any like negative plays from him. He's not dropping big passes or anything like that. So I say let him play, man. Unleash him, man. Let's do it. Next one here for Jay. Everett looks to be gone. How do you think Bryce Hopkins' role changes now? Uh, barely heard from him this past season. Yeah, I I think that uh, Johnny Munt and uh, so I'm getting all hot. <laughs> I think that Johnny Munt and Tyler Higby are going to be the main guys this year. I don't think that Gerald Everett comes back. Uh, Hopkins, uh, maybe I don't think his role necessarily increases that much. I think Munt is next in line to have an increased role uh, from the tight end position. Number nine here from Jay. How can the team squeeze value? For out of their limited draft picks, dude, by just keep doing what they've been doing. I like the the value has been there. Van Jefferson, Cam Akers, I mean Jordan Fuller. Those are just you know this this last year. But I mean the Rams have had strong classes. Taylor Rapp is one of the ones that I'm kind of now. I don't want to call him a bust yet, but I, I'm kind of dropping him down a little bit uh, just because I mean he hasn't been playing that well. But uh, I think that the Rams have had very, very strong value out of their draft picks so far. And so I don't think a change necessarily needs to happen. Just keep doing what you're doing, guys. Um, but with uh, uh, blanking on his name, I'm going to feel like such a jerk. Um, he went to uh, Detroit. He's now their, their uh, GM. I, I think him going over there... Um, God, I'm really blanking on his name. I know it. I know who he is. But uh, I, I think that that may come into play because... I mean, he was with the Rams since, like, what, 2001? So, I mean, uh, he was a big part of that draft process, so we'll see what happens there. And uh, no, number 10, what's your most prized Rams jersey? That's a tough one, man. It could be this one here because this is my my bone gray Sheriff Joe Bags number 9 jersey. I don't wear jerseys that much anymore. I do have a Morgan Fox over here. Actually, you know what? I lied. I, I will say I, I will say that it's my... um. It's my my color rush number nine Sheriff Joe Bags jersey. It fits me real nice, and it's it's very difficult to find clothing that fits me in a, in a reasonable way when you're built like the goalpost. And so I, I appreciate that, and I I love the yellow. Yellow is my favorite color, and uh, so to have a, a number nine, which is my that was my number in high school. Uh, when I played football, when I was on the team. <laughs> and so uh, when I when I was in high school, I, I wore number nine. Uh, number nine just kind of has always been my number for some reason. And uh, that, that one, I would say, is my most prized one. Um, but I do have, I think I have like four Marshall Falk jerseys. Um, I have a Michael Sam jersey. Uh, Cortland Finnegan, I really liked that one. That was one of my favorite ones for quite some time. I did have a Sam Bradford jersey that was signed by Chris Long. I got it signed in 2010 up in Denver. Uh, it was Bradford's rookie year, but Chris Long came out. I got him to sign it. Uh, that that was stolen out of my car, so unfortunately, I don't have that anymore. But if anybody sees a blue Sam Bradford jersey signed by Chris Long, number seventy-two, let me know. I want to go find it. But yeah, that's uh, I'll go with the color rush number nine, Sheriff Joe Bags jersey. I love that one. Uh, the only thing I have, there's one gripe I have on it. It's got the 100 logo on the chest, but I'm going to change that. I really hate that. <laughs> I didn't want that on there at all, but hey, it happens. It's all good. Uh, all right. This next one here comes from Cole. 
Thanks for hopping in, Cole. Do appreciate it. I think I've seen your questions a couple of times here, but uh, not not recently. So welcome back. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I've seen a little talk about Acres, so my queso is about him and Stafford. How much Im- importance will there be to have Acres rush for 100 plus in games with Stafford under center? Is McVay planning on slinging nonstop with our new QB, or can he keep it balanced? Stafford has had 11 100 yard rushers. Uh, in his career that is 6.5 percent of the games he's played in a very low number very very low number if we can run then we can uh, play action and sling it love this question as well man um so what i think is that we we know sean mcveigh a little bit we've 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 kind of experienced the mcveigh and we do know that he kind of gets into some rhythms sometimes and sometimes he gets a little stubborn sometimes he likes to stick to the pass when maybe he needs to just run it a few times I think with Stafford coming in, we're going to want to sling it. So I think we're going to see the the average number of pass attempts. I think we could see an increase there. As far as uh, the importance of Akers in getting that 100-yard that game, you know, Matt Stafford has not, like you, you, you literally referenced it here, 11 100-yard rushers in his career you know, from behind him. So that's... That's such a low number, and if we can even, I mean, I think that there's potential we get 11 this year. I mean, that's a high number, I realize that, but it's possible, and if if that happens, I'm really excited to see what Stafford does with a run game, because when you don't have a run game and you have 11 100-yard rushing games uh, from your running backs in your career, people kind of pin their ears back and come after you a little bit. They drop into coverage and then they also blitz the hell out of you. So I think that 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 opens up a whole other level of Matt Stafford that no one has seen yet in his entire NFL career because it just hasn't been there. That run game has not been there. And so for that reason, I'm very excited to see what the run game does for Matt Stafford. But you're right. It does come back to McVay. And is he going to commit to that? Is he going to commit to the run? Or is he going to kind of abandon that and just throw the rock? I, I mean, we've talked about it. I can't remember who I've talked to this about, but uh, we've talked about it plenty of times of like uh, Sean McVay. When when we come out and throw the football three times on the first drive and it's three and out, three incompletions from Jared Goff, but it was three passes. So three passes told me that we're not going to run the ball that much today. It's gonna, we're going to have a hard time getting balance going. And then the three incompletions from Jared Goff said, Jared Goff is not on today. Probably not going to be on because that's what that's what that's how it went. I mean, if we could get a couple of first downs in the first drive, I felt good. But if we went three and out on that first job drive with three incompletions by Jared Goff, I had very low confidence in the rest of the game because when Jared Goff would play the whole game, how he started the game. And so uh, going back to the Sean, Sean McVay, though, I mean, when he's just coming out and throwing the football three times right away. You have to kind of think like, okay, he's he's getting past happy today, and then we would have we would kind of struggle those days. So I I think it all comes into play. Um, but either way, I think that um, I think that O'Connell uh, being a little bit and having that a little bit heavier of a role this year as the Rams' offensive coordinator, I, I'm hoping that that kind of balances out Sean McVay a little bit, and uh, and we do see that balance between run and pass because if we can get a good run game with Matt Stafford, I'm very excited to see what he can do this year. So. I do appreciate your fan quesos, guys. Make sure you guys drop them, and I will answer them all in the next show. I do. You guys are still here? Dude, it's over. Get out of here. Subscribe, I guess, if you're just going to hang out. Or watch this video. Whatever you need to do. Go Rams. Peace.